One of the things I get asked about a lot is when I finish up a project, either an upgrade or an amplifier from scratch project, it's like, where's the bomb? Besides the bomb, what really drives me crazy is then people want me to go look up the part numbers for every one of the resistors and capacitors and stuff that I used and then cut and paste all of those into a spreadsheet form as well. First of all, looking up all those part numbers would double the time that it takes me to put together a bomb. Secondly, within a month of putting out that parts list, either the parts numbers are going to change or that one specific resistor is going to be out of stock and then one that's maybe a, a bulk pack instead of a cut tape or ammo pack that's the exact same resistor but it's got a different part number and then people can't figure that out and at first I was just baffled but now I truly believe people don't know how to use a parts list or a parts catalog or how to look up parts so that's what this video is going to be I'm going to hold your hand through the whole process of looking up a couple of resistors and a couple of capacitors on the Mauser website and show you how the filters work, how to narrow down your search, what to look for when you're picking parts, and then when you need to find some parts, you can go to their site and find it instead of going, there's 880,000 capacitors, I don't even know where to start. So, felt this was a much needed thing, I kind of took it for granted, it seems so simple to me. Clearly, it's baffling to a lot of people out in the world. And so, let's get to learning how to find parts. Okay, so first we obviously need to open up a web browser. And we're going to use Google Chrome. And we're going to jump to Mauser is our first place we're going to go look. And here we go. Okay, first let's search for something we know the part number of, like the 194G choke. And you can see it came up with 43 results. So let's look and see which ones look like what we're looking for. And as you can see, it pulls up, you know, this is a REF 194GSZ, but here's what we're looking for the 194G Hammond Transformer. And so, we're going to click there. It pulls it up in this window here. It shows us they have 32 in stock. That they can ship immediately, which is important. You want to make sure we're buying stuff that's in stock. And, you know, because sometimes this on-order or expected date might be 12 months from now, given the supply chain issues. And so, we kind of double check. We know we're looking for a 3 Henry, 250 milliamp. This looks like the right one. And you just simply put one and buy. And we're going to continue shopping. So, you can click right here. This takes us back to their home page. Let's do something that people seem to have more confusion about the resistors. So resistors are passive components. Go to resistors. Okay, here it's gonna give a list of different kinds of resistors. And you know, there's 880,000 resistors to choose from. So, yes, we do need to narrow this down. And as you can see, the vast majority of them seem to be these metal film resistors. So, or at least the film resistors. So, we're going to narrow this down. We've already narrowed down the 880,000 to 58,000. Now, if we know we want a very specific brand, which... We do. In this case, I like getting these Vichy resistors. So you click that, apply the filter, and 
that cuts down the list considerably. Now there's two different ways you can go here to narrow down the list even more. Probably the easiest way is to come over here and we know we want 2 watt resistors. Here we go. Now we're down to 660 options. Apply filter. Okay. Now, we're pretty sure we want to buy these Pro 2 or PRO 2 resistors. These are what I usually buy. Click that. Apply filter. Now we're down to a much shorter list. Another way you can lower it even more is we probably want 5% resistors, but it's not bad to have a choice in case they don't have 5% in stock. So let's come down here and we want to buy some 1K ohm resistors. So we click 1K ohm, put apply filters. Now you've only got two choices. We've got this JR500 and the JA100. So you go, what's the difference in the two? They're both 2 watt, 1K, 5%. This one's got more of them in stock. Here's the key here, it's a cut tape. That's just the way they're packaged. And if we scroll across here, you'll see all the specs are identical. 500 volt rating, same diameter, same length. But you can see this one says ammo pack, cut tape. For our use, either one will work. There's machines that automate the assembly process that need one type or the other. Okay, the next thing to look at is the pricing here. See how these are, one of them is 36 cents and 10 of them are 16 cents each. So if you're going to buy more than four of these, you might as well get 10 of them because you're really paying about the same price for 10 of them as you are for four of them. And whenever I'm building a project, I always buy extra resistors because you never know if you're going to screw up and cut one too short or you solder it in the wrong place and then realize that you made a mistake. And if you order the exact quantity you need, more than likely you're going to be coming back and making another order. And so, in this case, if I needed four of these guys, I would just buy ten of them and keep the spares for spares for future projects. Sometimes if it's a really common value that I use in a lot of my projects and I know I'm going to be building other projects, like these 1K resistors, I'll just order 20 of them just to make sure I've got plenty of them in stock. So... Let's say you wanted something a little different. You can come in here and say, let's not have that series. And let's see what our other options are. So we can come down here, pick the resistance again we want, which is 1K. As you can see, when we uncheck that, we get a lot more options on values. So this time, instead of just two, we're getting 11 results. And that's just within one manufacturer. And so here's our 1% ones. Here's a slightly different resistor. And if you want to see the difference between this CPF in a PRO, you can scroll across. This little chart will sometimes tell a story. It's got a different co temperature coefficient. These will work at a higher temperature, but see this here, they're only rated for 350 volts. And so the difference is too is 
they're shorter and they're not as big in diameter, which makes it easier for the voltage to jump across them. And that's why the voltage rating is lower. So for tube use, we wouldn't want to use that. And you can see these are power resistors and these are considered precision resistors. Let's see what other options we have here. Looks just more of the same theme. Again, 350 volts is probably not what we want rated using for tube amps. It would work in, you know, some positions in the amplifier, but not all. So, the other thing you want to note here is the availability. These are all non-stocked. That means you'd have to special order them. And you'd really need to call Mauser or email them and say, hey, how long do you think it's going to take for those to get here? And sometimes, you know, it's quick. Sometimes it's a long time. And like this one, there's only four of these in stock. You can view the dates on the ordering. They've got 600 on order, but they're not expected till December 11th, 2023. The factory lead time is 84 weeks. So that gives you an idea of, you know, how long sometimes the lead times on some of these things are if you're trying to buy some that aren't in stock. And so they usually keep these PRO resistors in stock. So let's say they didn't have any Vichy ones in stock, but you still need to get some 2-watt 1K resistors. You don't do that manufacturer, and now it shows every manufacturer. Here's some TE connectivity. Here's some Yego. Some more Yegos. But you can see a lot of these are non-stocked. So it gives you an idea of like how to look this stuff up. And again, you can look over here and see what the max voltage ratings are and make sure that the max voltage ratings hit what you're looking for. The other thing you can do is in this little chart here, if you only want to see the 500 volt rated ones, you can do that, apply the filters. And then the nice thing is that they block out the options that are no longer available. Let's say you wanted to make sure they were flame proof. Click that guy. Hit filters and Yego has flame proof ones. They're 500 volts. And maybe that appeals to you or you think that's a good idea to have some flame proof ones, which means if they do overheat and burn up, they're not going to catch on fire, which might be a really good thing to do if you are doing them on like the cathode resistor that potentially could burn up if there was a tube red plating. Might make sense to get a flame proof one. So... That's how you can kind of pick through these charts. And again, it's easy to come in here and just clear the things that you don't want. And it opens up the number of options available. So let's go back to passive components and capacitors. As you can see, again, there's 839,000 options on capacitors. So we know we want some electrolytic capacitors and we may not want to dive in any deeper than this although we may say we want radial leaded or snap in probably not a choice we want to make this early on because we may not have the option of a radial or axial leaded but they'll have a snap in and we'll just have to make it work so First thing I usually choose is come down and pick the voltage that I know that I want. And let's say we want, 
Let's try to find those big 550 volt capacitors that people seem to have a big problem finding. Okay, so we hit 550 volt. We're going to go ahead and just apply filters. And then let's see what all our options are. We know we want 330 UF. So we click there and apply filters. Okay, we've got 15 options. So one of the things that was critical on this application is we want it to fit in the mount that was inside the amplifier. And we know that it's a 35 millimeter diameter because we measured it. So we come over here and we look and it's like, okay, there's a 35 millimeter, there's a 35 millimeter, there's a 35 millimeter. So we've got several choices here. 35 millimeter seems to be a very common size. And then see there's a 40. So we might want to come in here and just go, we only want to look at the 35 millimeter diameter ones. The other checkbox, while we were looking at the non-stock ones, you can click here, and that shows you only the in-stock options. And that narrows it down to two capacitors. And one of them is this Cornell Dupler that I chose, and then here's a Kemet. And these are both 550 volt, 330 UF, Let's look at the difference in the two of them. They're different prices. The Kemet ones are $7 more a piece, which would mean we'd spend $15 more buying those. They're both snap-ins, both same tolerance. Okay, the Cornell Dubler has half the ESR which is something that is good to have is a low ESR in audio gear. So that's leaning towards that one. They're both two pins. They're both 35 millimeters. Okay, this one is 60 millimeters long and that one's 50 millimeters. We know we've got a limited amount of space. So that leans back towards this 50 millimeter one. Now, Here's something you may be concerned about is this has a 3,000 hour service life and this one has a 15,000 hour service life. The key thing to understand is that is rated at the maximum voltage. So if these things are running at 85 degrees Celsius, that's their service life. Okay, as you lower the operating temperature, the service life exponentially gets longer. And so I don't have a problem, you know, looking at the shorter service life. But again, you know, if we can make this 60 millimeter one fit, this might be a more durable capacitor if you want to spend the extra money. And either one of these will work. So you don't need to like email me asking me which one of these to use, you can make this decision yourself on which one of these you want to use. And maybe get your caliper and measure and see if a 60 millimeter one will fit and you think it's you know okay from a physical size standpoint and you're okay spending the extra $15, this might be the better choice for you. I didn't have a worry about this you know, service hours given the temperature. And so we went with that upper one. Ideally, I like buying capacitors that are rated at 105 Celsius, but that's not an option here. So let's go look at some of the other capacitors that there may be more choices on which ones we can use. So we're going to clear that. We're going to clear the diameter and we're going to clear the voltage rating and 
We're still using these electrolytic capacitors, but we're not going to just call snap-in ones either. We actually don't want snap-ins for these other ones. And snap-in means it has those short stubby leads that are meant to use on a PC board, but you can solder wires to them. So in this case, we know we want to get some Nikocons if we can get them. So let's go ahead and select that first. And then let's scroll down here. And we know we want 350 volts. And you can select two things at a time if you would like. We know we want 330 UF. We see radials, the only choice. Click apply. So, we got eight to choose from that are in stock. Which ones do we want? Okay. So, we're looking over our options here. They all seem to have a lot of them in stock. So, that's not a big concern. And then, so let's scroll over and look at what some of these are. Okay. It's a 105C rated, which is a good thing. It's got a 5,000 hour. It can handle 180 milliamps of ripple current, which on that, the higher is usually the better. Especially if you're using it in a power supply where we're trying to filter ripple out. So, you can see this one has 900 milliamps of ripple. Also has a 10,000 hour life. It's 105 C rated. And that's starting to look like a really high quality unit there. And they're not that expensive. It's one of the cheaper ones. You can see they're both about the same size. So let's come up here and go. We don't want any that are rated below 105 C. So let's apply those filters and narrow this down a little more. So now we're choosing between five of them. And again, we glanced down at the prices. The prices are very similar. So that's not part of our concern. Let's scroll over here again. And they're all the same size. or very close to it. Now one thing that could be a concern if you're going to be soldering it into a printed circuit board is the lead spacing. You want to make sure that the leads are the right width to go into your circuit board. But since all of these are the same, we're going to assume that that's not a concern. And honestly, I think I would go with this 10,000 hour 900 milliamp one. That seems like, you know, one of the higher quality ones out of this list and we don't have to worry about you know excessive ripple heating up the capacitor and causing issues and it's just a general purpose capacitor but it should work great for our use so that's the one I would pick so I hope you're seeing kind of my thought process on choosing capacitors when you've got multiple to choose from Although, honestly, any of these would probably work. But if we're going to be, you know, making a choice, we might as well buy something that we think is going to be optimal for our use. And that one looks like it would be super durable, can handle a lot of current, and for what we're using it for in a power supply, that makes sense. So next we're going to go look at some that we may use on the cathode of a tube, which we know is in the signal path and can have a difference in the audio quality of the amplifier. Since we know we're looking for audio grade capacitors, we'll come over here and click audio grade electrolytic caps. As you can see that limits our choices a lot. And this will also show you that, you know, there's limited voltages 
that these audio grade caps are available in. Like you can see there's no 350 volt, so you'd have to choose either a 250 or a 400. And if you, you know, if you need a 350 volt, you'd go with a 400. But you can also see there's no 500 or 550 volts in audio grade. So we know we need 100 volt. So let's go with that. And we need 100 UF. So let's apply those filters. And you can see we have five choices. Now, part of this is understanding Nikikon's numbering system. And they have these UKs, and then they have these UF. And so, if you're not sure what all of those mean, you know, we look at the prices, they're all about the same. You know, they're within 50 cents of each other, so that's not a big issue. So we're going to pull up the data sheet here. Okay, they're telling us that the UFGs are better than the UFWs, but they're not as good as the UKZs in their rating. And they're saying these are high-grade standard type for audio equipment. Now, I've used these. These are the gold color ones, and they really do work well. And I don't have an issue using this quality level in their capacitors. You can see it's got more info about, you know, case sizes and leakage currents and all that kind of stuff. Stuff we're not too concerned about. But this does let us know these UFGs are considered kind of their middle grade audio caps. So let's open up the UKZ data sheet. And this is telling us that these are the premium grade Nikikon Muse Acoustic Series. Ideally suited for first class audio equipment. So, these may be what we want to get for this amp, especially in a cathode bypass position. Now, if it's in the power supply somewhere, the UFGs are fine, but using them like on a cathode bypass capacitor, these are the grade that I would want to be using. We're going to get one of these two, and I'm not sure there's any difference between those two. Let's see if we can see what the difference is. Here we go. Once again, bulk and an ammo pack. And I believe the ammo pack is used for the automated machines that, you know, assemble things like robotically. So, out of all of these, simple choice. Get the cheaper of these two because it doesn't matter to us whether it's an ammo pack or whether it's bulk and interestingly enough they're cheaper than the ammo pack so you can buy here minimum in multiple quantities it shows you we're not getting a real you can still buy you know singles if you need to so you just put the number you want in here and buy them you can see on some parts you don't get as big a break going from one to ten so it might not make sense if you only need four of these. You know, you're talking about $4.50, where if you buy 10 of them, you're, you know, over $9. So there is kind of a break point on some of these parts on whether it makes sense to go ahead and buy 10 of them or just buy the number that you need. And for capacitors, especially given that they've got the numbers written on them, it's really hard to be, you know, careless and make a mistake soldering those into the wrong place. Well, I hope that was helpful in showing you how I look up parts using the Mauser's website. And there's other places to look up parts. Some of them aren't quite as good with their filters and stuff. Parts connection is very similar. You go to like parts and then it has like film caps. And then you go to the brand, you look for Mundorf. And then you go the aluminum oil or whatever and you know a tip on their site if it won't let you add it to the cart that means they don't have it in stock and go find something else and also be ready to you know shift your expectation on them having every single part I've had to like order the EVO aluminum instead of the EVO aluminum oil for some projects I can't hear any difference between the two I order the aluminum oil if they have them in stock, but if they don't, I don't have a problem just getting the plain aluminum 
I will say the really cheap MKP ones don't sound great used for coupling caps. So I wouldn't go below the EVO aluminum. And I really wouldn't go above the aluminum oil because I don't believe you're really going to hear the difference in when the price starts doubling and tripling and quadrupling from what those cost. And so, anyway, I think the resistors and capacitors are the things that were the most confusing, so I wanted to go over that. Again, I hope this video is helpful to folks that have never had to like navigate a parts system before to find what you need and you'll understand why I don't go through and find every part number because again stuff goes out of stock sometimes it's a year waiting list and at the end of the day it's not going to make a difference whether you use a Vichy or a TC or a Yago or whatever kind of resistor if you want to finish the project, you got to use what they have. DigiKey uses the same kind of platform, so it's identical to searching at Mauser. Anyway, hope you enjoy my content. If you're enjoying the channel, please subscribe. Please like the video. And we'll see you soon. Have a nice day.